I've been drinking a lot more tea uh, this past like eight, nine days in the mornings. And this morning, I also have something that's on my mind that I figured it would be interesting to talk about. It involves this. Not the brand, not this, but cereal. Because being Canadian, I grew up loving this stuff. Like cereal, cereal, cereal. When I wake up in the morning, it was have a huge bowl of mixed cereal, all sorts of different types, eat it, drink something, go to school. That was my mornings. And to be fair, cereal's pretty good. But something that's uh, kind of grown on me over my life here living in Southeast Asia, even since being in Hong Kong and then coming to the Philippines is having more substance for breakfast. Actually, even a little bit in Britain, how they have like a proper fry up, this is not substance. It's kind of like sugar, refined carb overload. Substance is hopefully coming soon. Not knocking this though, it's good and there's banana chips in it. Okay, brunch slash breakfast is coming. Mama Rose is the best. Okay, let's get back to this topic. First and foremost, Mama Rose, again, legend. This is fried malasugi, I absolutely love it. With achara, she makes that achara, you would have seen it in videos before, obviously I love eggs. This here, oh my gosh, I'm gonna show you. This here, ah, the best. That is a squash. Soup. I love squash soup. Anything calabasa. Anything calabasa is amazing. Calabasa is awesome. Mm. And it's very good for the eyes. Now, okay, back to the topic. Oh, this is a fruit salad too, by the way. Um, growing up in Canada, you know, it's always get the cereal. Like I showed you earlier, it's over here. And we're off the cereal for breakfast, as a kid anyways. Now, again, not all the time. We have pancakes, we have eggs, you know, we have granolas, we have oatmeal, stuff like that. But, but you know, we grow up and it's always like cereal, 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 let's have cereal, hooray, lucky charms, hooray. Whereas here, it tends to be substance, you know, like a meat product or a fish product. You know, get a hearty soup or something. Um, Obviously, what's funny is, uh, and Mama Rose would know this, there's no rice right now because she gave me a ton of food, obviously, and she knows I, I don't eat as much rice. I love rice. Rice is awesome, and that is like the staple here, but I just don't like eating it at every meal because I enjoy eating all the ulam. Um, yeah, I think, I guess you could say that when it comes to the basic kind of refined thing, for us it's like a cereal. For here in the Philippines it would be rice. That's like the refined carb, or uh, not refined, that's just like the simple carb that people will eat. It's obviously better to have red rice or brown rice or black rice or not just white rice, but for a lot of people here, white rice and a meat or ulam is the way to go. And I just think it's interesting because 
I remember the first time I was here in the Philippines uh, on that first trip for three weeks in 2013. All of my breakfast, I never saw granolas or cereals or oatmeal. It was always ulam, ulam, rice, you know, eat some meat, something like that. And I wasn't used to always being presented with that in the morning. But I've learned to actually appreciate eating like foods of substance as my brunch or as my first meal of the day as opposed to kind of just the refined cereals. So again, not trying to generalize that everybody, no, we grew up in Canada eating lots of things, but cereal is definitely something that's always on our mind growing up. It's like North American cereal. There's a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy Woo! Okay, let's stick with the topic right now which is little differences and obviously what I'm doing right now laying here on the Banig uh, under the heat of the sun at 12.45 in the afternoon this is also something that is definitely different in the Philippines. I would say that the majority of Filipinos tend to cover themselves fully in the sun or avoid the sun. And one thing that blew my mind completely was after my first year staying here, I really started to realize how many whitening products there are, how people tend to go towards looking at white skin as being something they want to achieve. Whereas for us in Canada, like all my friends growing up in high school, especially all the girls in high school, they would go to the tanning salon. I know many guys who go to the tanning salon. It was all about laying in the sun, getting tanned. And uh, yeah, I am certain that everybody over there in the facility right now is probably looking out at me going, that dude is definitely foreign. Because this is very much a foreign thing to do. Show you what I wish I knew. My will is strong with a place to lean. In the moment I hung best belief. The other ring of my wrist is gold. Bearing with the light it holds. When I return from my skin and bone. This is a classic song in the Philippines. If uh, it's like the end of the night, I tend to hear this. Kamu kamu si paraluman nung tayo ay bata pa at ang galing galing mong sumayaw mapabugi man o cha cha. Nungit ang paborito Ay pagsayaw mo ang ebbing mo Nakakainda Nakakaaliw I said that wrong Nakakating tindig palahibo Pagkagaling sa skwela Ay di diretso na sa iyo This is a classic song and that chorus you just heard me sing horribly is one I love listening to belted out at like 2.30 in the morning at a rest the bar. Reminds me of 2013, my first trip to the Philippines, just way too fun. Um, singing in resto bars, 
having a beer with friends until the wee hours in the morning for almost no reason at all, just happiness. Singing is happiness in the Philippines, and me awkwardly singing here, I'm sure my neighbors and everybody upstairs actually does not care. I think they're probably just like, all right, you can sing in the mall, you can sing in the street, you can sing outside your house. Singing is just a stress reliever and a part of Kalipai. And that song rules. Yeah, something I probably wouldn't have done in Canada many, many years ago here. I sing a lot more freely just because it's dope and this country rubs off on you that way. Back to singing. There's a life I lead in the city Hurry and cut my teeth I can take what I'm finally giving myself a Wolverine pedicure. Uh, this is something actually I grew up obviously doing in Canada. We cut our own toenails because it's just, well, at least I'd say the majority of us do, especially us males. Um, but here in the Philippines, I don't do this as often anymore because it's fun to support somebody local. It's maybe only 50 pesos, 100 pesos, and they do a wicked job giving you a pedicure or a manicure. Differences. I got my running shoes. But classic culas, I don't have socks. So they're gonna stink after this. I'm gonna start jogging circles here. Get the energy going. See how I feel? Feeling good? Again, taking this seriously. Feeling really good. I got a good pace actually. It's just frustrating because I have to pivot and turn back quickly. But we're bringing down the blood pressure. No sunset today, but I just ran four kilometers in 20 minutes, and I could have run way more, uh, it's just I have no socks. Right there. And that's difficult because I don't want to get blisters. And it's tough to maintain speed actually, because I have to quickly pivot everywhere I go here. Um, yeah, everyone kind of gets a space and seems to do exercise at their super early morning and afternoon, so that's, that's wonderful. I think a lot of people are feeling good and recovering, motivating each other. And now there should be one thing about to happen, like I said, that is very important for the durian. Don't know if you can hear that. But like I said earlier, people love singing. And somebody's belting out with that music right now in the house. 
I'm still, I'm waiting for something. I'm waiting for the astronaut. Well, oh, I still got red face from running. That's awesome, and the sun. Feeling great. Uh, I was actually planning on making a joke about durians and being high blood and how, you know, if I went jogging and then I probably lower my blood pressure because, you know, when you have a healthy heart, you have a lower blood pressure and uh, cardiovascular exercise can help with that. But I was going to make a joke with the astronaut. He was going to take my blood pressure and then I was going to be like, oh, look at I'm low blood so I can eat this. Um, but the astronaut never came. So I think they're switching over the nurses right now. So it's dark and somebody brought me a durian and this is a very good durian. I can already sense it from the smell. Look at that, creamy as ever. Mm. Let me know, because all I ever hear about nutrition and durians from people, as I say, high blood is like a joke. What's the actual nutrition in a durian? I think it's high fat. Um, I'm gonna look it up. Here's the other thing. In the Philippines, you might start by not liking something. Like I remember when I first saw a bulad, a dried fish, and I looked at it, it was like, oh. And they even tried a bit, it was like, oh, it's kind of weird. But now I kid you not, I would go for bulad, it log, that's egg and rice, for breakfast over a bowl of that banana cereal stuff. I'd probably go for like a high quality granola over the bulad. I don't know. I really like bulad now. And just like this, a durian. First time I ate this, I was a bit like, mm, you know, I don't know. But now, it makes me smile. Just like this piece. I won't eat any more than this. Don't want to be high blood. A few unique little differences. Another day here, feeling good, feeling strong. Let's keep power on, guys. Let's get out of here in the near future. It's a good durian.